Considering today's standards of raising animals, mm -hmm. of curing meats, I don't fully understand, this is, as I think I should, the, the restriction that we have on pork. Sister. All right, I'll explain it to you. No, I'll do even better than that. I'll show you, but this is purely in the interest of science, you understand? Here we have the eastern mole and the brown rat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's my old friend, the aardvark. And here we have the bush pig, as it says, closely related to the domestic pig. Now, do you know why it teaches us not to eat from the pig? Well, the pig contains certain disease-causing organisms. Right. Right, you're exactly right. Now, that's the physical aspect. There's also the mental or psychological aspects, and there's the spiritual reasons why we're not supposed to eat of the pig. Look at the characteristics of a pig. He's sloppy, he's greedy, greedy like a pig, isn't that what they say? They also say you are what you eat. So what we put into our mouths affects our minds and our heart. We don't want to take on these characteristics of sloppiness, of uncleanliness, of selfishness. Now from a spiritual aspect or a spiritual standpoint, the Bible and the Quran teaches us that it is divinely forbidden for us to eat of any pig. In various chapters in the Bible and the Quran it talks about this. For, so from a, a physical standpoint, from a mental or a psychological standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, we don't want anything to do with this animal. Shalom, shalom family. We back with the part two of the dietary laws. So in this part, we're going to be looking at the spiritual aspect of the dietary law, dealing with the, the clean and unclean meats. And in the first part, if y'all didn't see it, we just went through the laws in Leviticus pertaining to the certain meats that we can and cannot eat. So if y'all haven't seen that, definitely check it out to get the understanding of certain things that we can and can't eat. But like I said, in this part, we're going to see the spiritual aspect. Why we can't eat certain food and what's the spiritual meaning behind it? Or what's the, what's the meaning behind the things that we can eat on the spiritual level? So that's what this part is. We're going to examine the spiritual understanding of the dietary laws. So before I do that, I want to bring out the scripture in the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 119 verse 18. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. So we're going to allow the Most High to open our eyes and our minds to see the wonderful things in his laws. Because we know the Most High don't do nothing in vain. Everything that he does and everything that he gave us is for a reason. For carnal and spiritual reasons. So we're going to see the wonderful things within the dietary law. And we're going to gain some serious understanding. Because even when you read Deuteronomy, the full chapter, it says that this is your understanding in the sight of the nations. And when they see us keeping these laws and why we keeping them, they're going to say, surely this is a wise and understanding people. So check this out real quick. Now, this is from the letter of Aristeas. And those who don't know who Aristeas was, he was an Israelite that lived in Alexandria. And um, this entire letter is about his help in translating the Hebrew Bible, the Hebrew scriptures into Greek for those Greek speaking Jews. Because at the time you had uh, Ptolemy II, around the 3rd or 2nd BC, who wanted the Torah in his library. So what we're going to read here is a letter from the high priest Eleazar writing to Ptolemy II, the king of Egypt. So let's let's read this real quick. It reads, in general, everything is similarly constituted in regard to natural reasoning, being governed by one supreme power, and in each particular, everything has a profound reason for it, both the things from which we abstain in use and those of which we partake. So he's basically saying when it comes to the laws that the Most High gave us, everything that we do and don't do have a significant reason behind it. So with that being said, we're going to look at the swine first and the spiritual aspect as to why we're not supposed to eat it. This from the epistle of Barnabas, chapter 10, verse 3. It says, Now the soul he forbade them to eat, meaning thus much. Thou shalt not join thyself to such persons as are like unto swine, who whilst they live in pleasure, forget their God. But when any one pinches them, then they know the Lord. 
as the soul, when she is full, knows not her master. But when she is hungry, she makes a noise and being again fed is silent. You ever seen how when pigs about to eat, when the master bringing out the food, they gather around all tight, they making all kind of noises, they squealing, until they finish eating, they quiet again, and they go about their day like ain't nothing happened. At that point, they don't even remember their master. But as soon as they're hungry, they remember them. That's the same way that we are not supposed to be like or even be around people who was like that. When we living our best life, everything going good and sweet, man, we ain't got no worries at that point. We forget the most high. Or you got people saying like, you ever seen when somebody all successful, they doing good for themselves? According to this world, they say what? Oh, I'm self-made. I did this on my own. But as soon as something hits the fan, as soon as something go down or they need something or they down and out, now we want to pray to the Most High. We want to pray to the Lord. We ain't supposed to be like that. We supposed to acknowledge the Most High and be thankful towards Him in all things, whether it's good or bad. We supposed to thank and acknowledge the Most High. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 10 And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells dig which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 10. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God and not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all of that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with a manner which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he sware unto thy fathers as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them and worship them I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish as the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face so shall ye perish because ye will not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God see the most high knew that Negroes would do that he knew that once his people got to a certain point a certain status and they all full eating good that they was going to forget him. And we see that today. I'm self-made on my own hand did this for me. This wasn't God. It was all on my own. I ain't need nobody else. That's our heart beginning to be lifted up and forgetting the most high. But like I said earlier, when we down and out, then we want to call upon the most high. We not supposed to be like that. 
That's why he said to remember that you forget the Lord or beware that your heart not be lifted up and forgetting the Lord and thinking that your own hand or your own strength did that for you. Because the most I said that he's the one that make rich and make poor, not our own doings. He's the one that's doing that. First Samuel chapter two, verse six, the Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. That's why it's important to always remember. And no matter what state that we're in, whether he bring us up or if, if he bring us low, he's the one that's doing that. So no matter what status, we always have to remember it's the Lord doing it. So we don't be so we don't uh, get beside ourselves and start forgetting the Lord. So let's get one more and then we're going to move on to the next one. Sirach chapter 18, verse 25. When thou hast enough, remember the time of hunger. And when thou art rich, think upon poverty and need. So just remember, when things going good, it's working out for you, it's sweet. Always remember the Lord and always remember that lowest state you was in and vice versa. So let's move on to these birds now. Let's talk about them next. Now we back in the letter of Aristides in verse 145. It says, the birds which we use are all domesticated and of exceptional cleanliness, their food consisting of wheat and pulse, such birds as pigeons, turtle doves, locusts, partridges, and in addition, geese and others of the same kind. As to the birds which are forbidden, you will find wild and carnivorous kinds, and the rest which dominate by their own strength, and who find their food at the expense of the aforementioned domesticated birds, which is an injustice. And not only that, they also seize lambs and kids and outrage human beings dead or alive. <laughs> Look at that. They will attack you even if you're alive. A human being. Let's continue. By calling them impure, he has thereby indicated that it is the solemn binding duty of those for whom the legislation has been established to practice righteousness and not to lord it over anyone in reliance upon their own strength, nor to deprive him of anything, but to govern their lives righteously in the manner of the gentle creatures among the aforementioned birds which feed on those plants which grow on the ground and do not exercise a domination leading to the destruction of their fellow creatures. By means of creatures like this, the legislator has handed down the lesson to be noted by men of wisdom that they should be righteous and not achieve anything by brute force nor lord it over others in reliance upon their own strength. Now, Eleazar is saying a lot here. He's talking about birds that are carnivores. Now, what they have in common is that they are predators. So, they don't hunt for their own food. What they'll do is they'll lurk around in the skies and in high places, and they'll wait for an animal to get their food, and they'll swoop down and take their animal's food or uh, uh, other birds' food. That's what they'll do. They don't hunt for their own food. They will take it from another animal. So in respects or in regards to dealing with people and characteristics, it's talking about don't be like these type of animals or these type of people who will take other people's food or labors. We're going to further break it down because Barnabas speak on the same exact thing. This is the epistle of Barnabas chapter 9 and verse 4. It says, Neither says he, Shalt thou eat the eagle, nor the hawk, nor the kite, nor the crow? That is, thou shalt not keep company with such kind of men as know not how by their labor and sweat to get themselves food, but injuriously ravish away the things of others, and watch how to lay snares for them, when at the same time they appear to live in perfect innocence. So these birds alone seek not food for themselves, but 
sitting idle, seek how they may eat of the flesh others have provided, being destructive through their wickedness. Off the rip, we see in two main commandments that's being broken already. Thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not covet. Because before you even get to the point of stealing, you have to covet in your heart before you even do the act. So off the rip, you're breaking two main commandments. We are not supposed to do that. We are not supposed to be like that. Now, we know what main race of people on this earth that does that. That steal, that destroy, that ravage, and take what's not theirs. Right. The Caucasian race. They are all famous for doing that. They are famous for doing that and known throughout the entire earth for taking and stealing and covering was not theirs and check this out what animal or bird are they associated with the eagle the eagle you see that because why the eagle lurks around in the skies looking what prey or what thing he can take from other animals and once he found it once he desired that thing in his heart he'll go swoop down and take it that's why they're referred to as the eagle you see that the most I says, don't be like that. Don't lord, lord over other people and take what they earn. What they earn. Don't do that. Here you come taking what somebody worked extremely hard for. That's pure and utter wickedness. Okay, we're not supposed to have that type of spirit on us as holy people. Let's get more scriptures on that. This is Psalms chapter ten and verse eight. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, and the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are probably set against the poor. He lieth and wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth and wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave. And who, as those that go down into the pit, we shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil, cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privately for their own lives. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. See, the scripture is telling us not to be around these type of people or to even have this type of spirit of a predator. And that's the same characteristic you see with these type of birds, these type of uh, carnivorous birds. They'll hunt other animals or they'll steal their substance. And like we just seen in the video earlier, how the um, the vultures came down and stole the cheetah's food. And they, they ain't worth for that. They sat there and watched the cheetah hunt down for his food and they came and took it. So we ain't supposed to be like that because you know why? You reap what you sow. So how you lurking around, you plotting against other people, you plotting against their life and against their substance, you setting your own self up. And like we said earlier, you breaking two of the main commandments, not to covet and not to steal. So that's going to come back to you if you have this kind of spirit. So by us being children of the Most High, we supposed to, to, to live in fellowship and charity amongst each other. We're not supposed to be lowering on each other, hunting down each other, and plotting against each other's substance. But live peacefully, holy, and in love and charity. And not as a predator, not in coveting, not in stealing. Okay, let's continue to uh, bring out some more scriptures on it. This is Micah chapter 2 verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. 
and they covet fields, and take them by violence, and houses, and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Now, of course, this talking about our people, but we also see this nature in the Caucasian race. They covet fields and take them by violence, going around taking other people's lands and taking their heritage and making it their own. Why do you think they're called culture vultures? <laughs> what is a vulture? What do they do? They take things that's not theirs and make it their own. And that's why when you read the scriptures, you see them being um, associated with the eagle, aside from them uh, exalting themselves in their pride, but in their nature and their characteristics, they're uh, predators. They hunt around, they lurk around to kill and to steal and to destroy. So the scripture says, woe to them that devise this type of iniquity because they have it in the power of their hand to do so. So woe means destruction and judgment and damnation. So any of those people or nations that have this type of spirit or characteristic, the most high gonna bring a judgment on that. And that's why the scripture says, to not be around people who is like this or to even have this type of spirit. Don't be like that because the Most High is going to bring good judgment to this type of uh, evil. So we're going to move on to the next part and um, discuss that.